Hi there, I'm Allison Moon and welcome to day 65 of 90 Days of Self-Publishing. Today I want to talk about, a little bit about promotion. Um, here's the thing about promotion and marketing is that most authors, particularly self-publishers, feel completely unmoored when it comes to marketing because we are artists, we are introverts, we are creators, we are not necessarily marketers. And there are people who get paid really well to do the marketing for the artists. They're usually called publicists or marketers. So here we are in this self-publishing world where we have to get really good at talking about ourselves and being proud of ourselves and sharing our product with people that haven't really read it yet and don't know if they like us or not. And it's a weird place to be in as a creator and I get that and I, I, I think it's really important but at the same time we want to promote and we need to figure out how to do that and the problem is with a lot of us because we're introverts and we're artists we actually kind of make weird or bad choices when it comes to promotional devices. Um, we all hear about you know horror stories of people who use their Twitter accounts specifically to just promote their self over and over and over and over again and it's annoying. Um, I worked in Hollywood for a very brief time and we would get, you know, certain like promotional gifts when it comes to like award season time for people that would just promote their movies and it would be crap. We'd get this like Chinese crap or, you know, just weird mass market stuff. It's basically like one level more than junk mail, but it's just like slightly more expensive and you feel bad for the person who approved it and who decided to spend money on this like cheap piece of plastic crap to promote something. Now, in terms of thinking about like uh, promotional stuff, I would say just think of two things. You want it to be creative, but you also want it to be useful. You want people to actually enjoy having it, right? Like it's instead of the club flyers that you see a lot, which is, you know, a million of them, sometimes you can kind of step up and turn it into something a little bit more unique. So I want to share something that I'm using and, you know, feel free to judge at will. I'm judging a lot about what I'm talking about. But um, so I created something bookmark. No, it's very simple. It's easy. It was cheap, which is important to me because, again, not much money to create. But um, here it is. So it's got whoop, my book cover here. It's got a cool quote from somebody who reviewed the book and liked it. It's got information now available from Powell's, etc. And then on the back, it's got all of my contact information, a picture of me, mostly because people respond to faces, um, and my contact information. And then I have a large blank area here, or you can see it on this one, um, a large blank area here that I can add stuff to kind of personalize it. The reason why I did this is because I ordered a bunch at a time, um, because it's cheaper that way. You, the you, per unit cost goes down the more you order. So I ordered a bunch and then I kept the back of this area blank so that I could personalize it when I'm going to certain events. I can send a chunk ahead of time. If I'm helping stuff gift bags, I could put whatever in information is relevant that week, that month. Um, on the back of the bookmark and so I can use these specific ones that I printed out for the lifetime of this book and I can just kind of personalize and update them based on what's going on in the season. And I also did something interesting here that I actually am really fond of is that um, I added this little perforation. It actually perforates here and I'm using these as raffle tickets for my event because I'm promoting both the book, but I'm also promoting my book release party, which is next week. So I want to be able to leave these out as flyers places. You see, I have the book release party information here. Isn't that fancy? Um, and then I will have the, the numbers here so people can, you know, use these as raffle tickets and then take them home with them or use them in the book that hopefully they will buy at my event. Um, and it kind of perforates and tears off. So you still have a good bookmark even after the number is torn off, which is kind of fun. It's useful. It's basically, it's a very simple flyer, but it's something that might be a little bit more useful than maybe one of those big club cards that you kind of have to fold in your back pocket, etc. So that's one thing. Another thing is that I actually get received a wonderful gift from my partner for as an early birthday present, which is this. Ta-da! You see? T-shirts. Um, we ha are very fortunate to live across the street from a really cool group of guys who own a screen printing uh, company. And so Eat Fuck Howl is kind of a joke that we came up with um, a, couple, a little while ago when Eat, Pray, Love was coming out. And I was um, you know, talking about how my book is basically the Eat, Pray, Love for queer women. It's Eat, Fuck Howl, right? So um, I joked about that and it kind of got sticky. People really liked that phrase. Um, so uh, Reed, my partner, turned them into t-shirts. And I think that's really sweet. It was actually really fun. Um, and we also designed another t-shirt, which I really like. This is what a feminist werewolf looks like. 
I really like these um, because A, for people who don't feel particularly comfortable having the word fuck across their chest, but also um, because obviously it's a kind of play on the old news magazine, this is what a feminist looks like. Um, and I like it because it works on multiple levels. You don't always know what a feminist looks like and you don't always know what a werewolf looks like. So I think it's really cute. And the cool thing is, um, now the thing you should know actually about, know about t-shirts before I talk about what's cool about them, um, you shouldn't use them to make money. T-shirts are not a great money-making device. People always use them for like fundraisers and stuff, and the truth is there's a there's kind of a high overhead with them because basically um, the per unit price is kind of high as far as promotional devices go. I mean, even if you go on the super cheap end in America, you're looking at like four to five dollars per shirt. Whereas even if you go abroad and you go to China or Taiwan to get them printed, you're still dealing with a per unit price that might be lower, but you're dealing with a lot of shipping costs, and it's just kind of a, a lot of issues to deal with. They're, they're not great for that. However, for promotional stuff, they are, pre are pretty much. If you're willing to absorb that cost and maybe just make your costs back, if not make any money from them, then they can be really useful because they're really fun. People like wearing them. People like free stuff. Um, and if they're cute and clever, then you can kind of get a thing catching on. But again, don't do that. Don't make t-shirts to make money for real. Um, so the idea behind these is we've got two different styles because two, you know, two different kinds of people might like them. And then at the same time, on the back of both of them, we've got lesbian werewolves. Dot com printed, which basically leads to my website. Because it's a little bit stickier than Tales of Pack.com, even though it's the exact same website. So that's pretty much it. Again, t-shirts, not a money-making thing, but could be fun for promotion if they're interesting enough. And again, like I think that you have to strike this balance between um, creativity and utilitarianism and um, you know import and timelessness. Because I know plenty of people who have like concert t-shirts from bands that don't exist anymore and maybe if you really like the band at the time it's fine but like then sometimes they like only last like hey this band was here for this couple of days and like eight years ago and it's, it's kind of a weird thing because you're not you're actually using to promote an event because that event will have flown by by the time the t-shirt is worn and enjoyed so don't use them necessarily to advertise a specific time but using them to just kind of advertise a certain cultural thing which is kind of useful Anyway, so that's kind of my two cents on everything. Um, obviously, hopefully, these will be around and I'll be able to change these for more events. I'm going to be in New York City in October. I'm going to add some stuff there. I'm going to be able to ship them to the bookstore before I get there so that they can put them out and then that can, they can promote without me even being physically in the city. These are useful things. Anyway, small little things that you can do to promote your book. So that's it for today. I will be back tomorrow with more 90 Days of Self-Publishing. Thanks for joining me.